Good evening, guys. Can you just take our seats? We'll begin in the next couple of minutes. Or actually, we'll begin now. Once you take your seats. All right. So, welcome uh, to the launch of a new initiative by Reddington Value. Uh, this initiative is called Jellyfish. It is the first in the series of uh, solutions that Reddington Value would bring to the market in the next couple of weeks. Uh, traditionally, Reddington Value has always been a distributor of different vendors and different products. Uh, I think now the time has come that we help the partner community even more by creating solutions which are business outcome uh, specific. Uh, we look at the challenges your customers are facing and real-time challenges that exist today. We, uh, we, we try and solve that for your customers using these solutions. Of course, our partner community is the most uh, important to us and you will be the guys who will be taking these solutions to market and that is why all of you are here today. Uh, basically, Jellyfish is a combination of a couple of our products and we have tried to solve uh, a new uh, a problem which is being faced by this region uh, a lot uh, these days and with the particular this current scenario in the political uh, geopolitical situations that are currently happening we will have a lot of such problems affecting businesses around the Middle East very very soon so it's best that you as uh, your your customers, trusted uh, advisors, bring out these solutions and give it off to them uh, to ensure that they are protected against such threats. Uh, I would like to call upon Pradeep Kumar, who is the principal uh, consultant uh, for Reddington Value. Uh, he will take us through this entire entire solution and how and uh, how exactly this particular product can help. So, over to you, Pradeep. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, yes. Right. So uh, it's been like seven. We're all, we are not going to keep you long, but uh, we definitely need your attention. So do we have your attention? Yes. Sure? Yes. Great. Yeah. You know what? We're going to have some drinks later. <laughs> so it's going to raise your voice much better. Than Good. So guys, this, this product is something new. It's something very, very new for Reddington Value, Reddington Health as such. We have launched many projects, and I'm sure you all have attended many of our product launches. But this is different. This is something different because the first time we're launching something in our own brand. So it's uh, something exciting for us. At the same time, it is something that we have to worry about how the market will perceive that, how you guys will perceive it, how it will be accepted by the customer. There are a couple of challenges, but I guess the market is mature enough to uh, accept the technology, and uh, we will also have a product management team who will drive the technology, use for it, and lots and lots of uh, issues. Good. So the problem we are trying to solve here, what is it? Security. Oh yeah, that's a pointed one. We are not trying to address the security directly. But we're trying to address security, or rather security threat, which is Iran today. So, just something you guys know. There are four awards to be given this year. And uh, these are the, all based on two years. So, I want you to have your attention so you can win a lot of them. There are only four, so remaining of you can remain silent. But, so, the idea is.
Good sir, just look at this, focus on this. May 2017, June 2017, July 2017. Can anybody tell me where this whole thing started about the WannaCry? What did it start about? Everybody knows, this is just, you know. Yeah, Sorry? Yeah, what, what did initiate this? What started this? Not when, what? It's very interesting for you guys to know because whenever you have a discussion with your customer, it's important that you go and talk on a topic that you know, irrespective, because you're talking on a topic that you're aware of. It's all started with these guys, yeah? Shadow brokers. So, you heard about Anonymous? Yes. You heard about that, yeah? Yes. So, Anonymous was probably for a cost. They had a job. So shadow brokers was a similar tool, but uh, the cost was not just, it was not just cost. So there are a group of hackers who hacked into the NSA, the National Security Agency of the US, and they stole a couple of, or rather a bunch of uh, employees. <coughs> so what they did was, they stole the US weapon and attacked the US bank using their own weapon. So they had a deal of their own You are aware of it? So you can see this, yeah, first one, eternal blue, eternal romance, the blue poster. This was the exploit, these were the names of the exploits they used. This was all developed by the National Security Agency. It was used to infect millions of computers worldwide. So you can see the spikes, the dips, but what you can see is it has been going on in one region or the other. So here's the first twist. Can somebody tell me what ransomware is this? You want to take a minute? Please. It's very interesting. It happens right in this country and the neighboring countries. One of No. Okay. One of No. You have one of them. No. What's the date? Third. Time up. Any more guesses? Alright, this is the Robin Hood ransomware, which attacked 8,000 in Saudi Arabia and 4,000 in the UAE. So, what they did is simple. Just go back. This is about the situation about the bombing, the war going to Italian and Yemen. So, the idea here is this they bring to your notice something that you know of, something that you probably believe in, something that you about. If you get somebody sending you something that you do not really like every what you probably do, you will not even bother to read that, you will just try. But when somebody sends you something that you believe in, that you like to know about, you want to read about it, just open it up. So this is what they did. They sent these pictures to them about all this. So that's a clear idea of how that went. This is the other important one which happened in the US. This is the Light rail surface in San Francisco. These guys were also attacked. So you would literally had a, a metro, which is free run. Now think about what would the impact if this happened here. The potential of this is enormous, not just in the IT world, but rather the manufacturing industry world. We call IAOT, industry IoT field. You could cripple everything. What is it? But what is 
these intersections can bind the hair. So these are the common models of angular neutrino sphere style. These are things you can bind on that, trust me. You can easily bind them on that. Still in the case of And then obviously the exploit of vulnerability. Do you guys know what a threat or an exploit and a, what a vulnerability is?
drink water, the most important thing. Now, how is it? How is that all to put here? What is the story?
interesting. We have a quiz coming straight out of this. It's a very interesting video and simple. Please watch carefully.
So the question is this. WannaCry, which has been in this space for a while, which has infected thousands and thousands of computers here, what vulnerabilities did it exploit? We talked about it in one of the slides. Microsoft. No, it was not an email. Microsoft vulnerability. And yeah, what is the name of that? Is it what is the name of that? Use the product. No, the name of the vulnerability. Eternal blue. Is Eternal blue. So Aditya. Yeah. Oh yeah. So here we have the winner. Yeah. So we'll have a. So as 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 Pradeep promised, as then. This is the only one you have, by the way. As uh, as we you. as we progress, yes. we will keep giving out uh, rewards. So please be very attentive. We need to sell this as much as we can. So congratulations to you. Sell not this one, rather the <laughs> uh, Just to make sure what Aditya said, you got it right. Now, you guys. So, now let me ask you this. How do you think we should fight this back? We've talked about many things. Social engineering, we've talked about. We've talked about uh, people embedding links in Google's. we talked about changing email domains. we talked about vulnerabilities. How do you guys think we should fight these menace? Or how we should help our customers? Find the run subjects. Any thoughts? Maybe the awareness program. That's obviously one, yeah, awareness program, yes. Are you guys technical or free sales? Free sales. Free sales. Free sales. Okay. You should not have been. Not really. We call by all. Everybody had fun. There was no customer who was attacked. So don't go with the technical guys, yeah? Ransomware. You guys know the answer, so you take the time. I want to hear from you because you are the one who's going to visit the customer, who's going to understand his pain point and present. A ransomware solution. Obviously, yes, a ransomware solution, yeah? But what do you think should be in that? It's not no technical discussion, yeah? And this is and the very, very important thing. 
you should not limit this to your desktop alone. It's very important. Go run somewhere and fetch your desktop as a server. You should not just limit it there. You should know what's happening in your firewall, what's happening with the email system, what's happening with the ERP system, what's happening with uh, the various databases, the kind of traffic that the people are visiting. You should know all this. What we call the enterprise wide visibility. And the most important one, you could have a system that can carry on, you can analyze this at real time speed. It's very important. You get something and you get a notification after 24 hours, it's of no use to you. Right? You go to have today, now, so you know what's happening and you can take a decision. So for that, you want to have a very scalable and efficient platform. It's very important. You, for example, you put Let's assume you have a lot of logs coming in your system. It's a uh, it's, uh, thousand users or a five hundred users. So you have a smaller network. Definitely you have a piece of firewall. You have your 200 users going to the internet. Can you guess what would be the events per second is generated, the logs are generated? Just by the firewall, in one second, it should be from five to 10. Look at that, in one day, how many events you want to generate? How are we going to assess all this? This is just from a firewall. Now think about your email. Think about the other servers. Think about the 200 desktops that generate. It's a humongous, it's a huge volume. So you need such a hardware which can scale and help you analyze this data. It's very important. So that's why we decided we're going to have all these and launch a product. That's why we introduced IntelliSearch. It has the pillar tree, which is the hyper-converged, I'm not an expert on that, so where it is, yeah. okay. Uh, hi everyone, so I look after the Pivot3 hyper-converged platform. I hope everybody is uh, uh, enjoying the session right now. You guys are uh, uh, getting everything what Pradeep is saying, right? So, Pivot3 They got the award, the time for the award. <laughs> so I guess they have this one. Great. So, uh, Pivot3 is, uh, Efficient and scalable platform. So uh, when we talk about hyperconverse, how many of you heard about hyperconverse platform? Great. So we, you know, when you get ransomware, the, the first problem with the ransomware is when you get attacked, nobody accepts it. Uh, you go to an organization who have been attacked. You ask him, "Did you get attacked?" Will he say yes? Of course, no, right? He will not say yes because that that will mark him down. So the Pivot3 and other platforms that we have in Jellyfish is removing the loop holes or the gaps that industry is having right now. So this Jellyfish is removing the loops and the gaps that you have to protect yourself from the ransomware. Right. So Pivot3 is highly efficient and scalable platform uh, which brings the scalability to your data center and provides you Okay, now, I'm going to use a term called isolated platform. This Jellyfish is going to be the isolated platform separately kept outside of your data center. When I say outside of your data center, this will, will be out of your production environment. So all your management consoles of all the products that we have will run inside this. So Pivot3 is going to run and protect and bring the events from HDDs to the console that we have. So the anomalies, okay, let me give you one more example. So uh, when the WannaCry was, was happened in the month of May, end of May, uh, and after that there was one more attack happened. Uh, anybody aware about that? Uh, no, one more, one more attempt. It was Petya and non Petya. Yeah? That was happened in Ukraine. So, what was missing in that? It was almost a similar attack. What was WannaCry had done? WannaCry has basically vanished a lot of computers in the complete world. But this Petya or non Petya happened in Ukraine. This happened in the when there was a public holiday in Ukraine. There was no office uh, workers was available in the office, uh, so it was properly planned. Uh, this attack was happened in the complete government offices in Ukraine, right? And uh, it was hit in the nuclear power plant of Ukraine. 
Because of that, almost half of the Ukraine was in dark, complete dark. So at, at 10 o'clock in the night, there were some war hooters go, going on. So they thought that there was attack from Russia happened. So there were some uh, you know, issues going on with Ukraine and Russia. So when these things happened, Ukraine <coughs> didn't learn from war crime. Right? So there was some loophole, there was some challenge, there was some problem that they could not guess. So when we put, put across this platform called Jellyfish, so we are integrating all the top-notch platforms together into one single platform, which removes all the problems as well as removes the loopholes that you generally have in your environment. That's why when I say isolated environment, that's where Jellyfish is kept outside your data center, isolated. When you said that, you know, uh, the management is going to, the management console or management for the particular NGO is going to attack first. So that's why we are keeping it outside from your normal data center. DMZ. Isolated, yeah. DMZ, yes. So, the Pivot 3 brings you that power. As, as Pradeep mentioned, we have number of events. You know, how many number of events that you're going to generate from one single laptop, one single uh, second, right? So similarly, if you are protecting 100 or 500 or, or 1,000 laptops, it's humongous. Behemoth a lot of events that you're going to have. So, the power of analytics, you know, that brings from the three months or four months old data. So now I'm coming back to the example. So this wanna cry happened and then non petra happened, not pet petya happens. So there was an anomaly. Okay. So that anomaly, how fast you can bring that anomaly from your existing data, that matters. So pivot three, the journey when you when you bring your data in five to ten minutes when it's too late when your ransomware is spread across your organization, Pivot 3 is bring them data in, in seconds, three months old data, six months old archived data. Bring it in a second so that you can judge through the other platforms which we have in the Jellyfish. Pradeep will talk about it. I'm not relieving that platform yet. So Pradeep will talk about it. So idea is providing you a most efficient, protective, and uh, you know something scalable. You know, if you want to protect 500, want to protect 1,000 uh, laptops, you should have a platform ready, which is protected, and you should have enough capacity in that, right? Enough power. It should scale. It should have resiliency in that. So that's what Pivot3 brings. And we are the leaders in a hyper-converse platform, especially uh, you know, when, it talk, when you talk about enterprise class uh, solutions in a hyper-converse. Uh, so that's what majorly on the Pivot3 side. Uh, you guys have any question on the Pivot 3 side? We will take it uh, uh, after the show as well as offline. Uh, now, Pradeep can uh, take over. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Anybody of you do uh, the hyper platform? Any other technology? Okay. What do you do? What platform do you work on? HP. HP, right here? Yeah. Okay, Danny, good. Yes, yes. Okay, so they are working the computer. <laughs> They will switch. It works only with the human devices. Nobody wants to do this. <laughs> so, anyway, so let me play you one more video. Are you guys getting bored? You sure?
but it definitely has got something to do with the last sentence. It's a question which we also try to answer internally. And uh, the question is this. Why did we try to name the product jellyfish? Does anybody have an answer for that? Any guesses? It's an easy guess, but you just need to look at the, the right way. Any guesses? Why did we name, talk about all this, why did we name it? Why did we name it? It's a good question, right? Let's keep on the why. Why did we name the jellyfish? It's a simple thought. Come on, guys. Make some evening. Make some thought. Give some guesses. Yeah? Sorry? That's partially correct, yeah. That's partially correct. Of course the characteristics, but what is it? That's the question. You're right, but it's a very, very big part of that. The next question. Uh, no. He said, okay, let me repeat the answer what he said. Probably that's my key to what I said. He said, sensory capability. In the sense because it has lots of senses, which means it has a visibility. It can see everything around it. What it rather can sense. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, let me. Uh, Both is. Sorry? Both is. Uh, uh, attack. Absolutely, yes. That's the one. So, what it does is this. One, first one, when it is right, that's actually the first answer it has to be. It is able to see, or rather sense, what's happening across it. And then, it is able to make a decision of attacking. It doesn't wait. Because, like it said in Sun Tzu, attack is the best form of defense, right? So, in fact, that's what it's going to do. So, that's the whole idea of what it is. And then the integrated thing. We're going to use all these tentacles for multiple purposes against it, with the mother. <coughs> that's the whole idea. Is it a beautiful idea? Yes. yes. Well, who is the guy? Yeah, Anitya. He's the one who came up with that. And then we have one more guy, Tushar. Great, so let's talk about the jellyfish. Okay, now, how this is yours. Do you want to talk a bit about it? Oh, I already spoke, but just, okay. just uh, anything if you're missing, you can. Uh, just the additions that uh, performance at scale and performance management. So, generally, you know, when you have a lot of events, uh, the, it brings a bottleneck uh, to any platform. Yeah. That's what we are doing for Intel 3 in there, because you have separate pipes for. Uh, the network application connectivity and the storage connectivity. So you, your storage runs on a separate pipe and uh, your network connects uh, on the application side runs on a separate pipe. So that's where you remove the bottlenecks and that's what we are doing. So you have ease of management, we have uh, uh, the vCenter plugin as well we provide you. So in case you have an existing vCenter, you can create this pivot three uh, jellyfish which we are bringing uh, on the table. You can add this as a separate cluster <laughs> in your vCenter and you can manage your pivot three <coughs> storage from there. Okay. That brings not only not only the jellyfish characteristics. Uh, we are also providing you the you know two ways scalability. Where if you want, uh, you have invested on the jellyfish and you want to use jellyfish storage because it's coming with ten terabyte usable space. And since you've invested on that, you can actually use it as a you know if you have existing ESXi cluster or if you have an existing physical server. You can use that storage using ice cream protocol. So that level of flexibility, integration, and scalability that we provide, uh, it's it's really great with Pivot 3. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. Great, thank you. The other important thing for you to understand is probably one more question. What is can you give an intuition of the CPU, the power of it, and the, the RAM it has? Uh, <coughs> so this isolated environments. Uh, it is actually coming up with 20 cores of Intel Xeon CPU processors that we have. It's a dual processor, uh, 10 cores each, and it is coming up with 120 GB of RAM in it, and it comes with 10 terabytes of usable space, where the uh, advanced RAID is called Eraser Coding. No other competition at this time provides you one single node of hyper-converged platform, which we are bringing on the table from the three side. In jellyfish platform. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So this is always.
said the other one, which is the sense of what he said. Now, how do you view what's happening? You need something, a big brother, to tell you what's happening around you. Big brother needs to know what's happening around to tell you what's happening. So we use the plug. This is a huge bucket. So, and what do you have? We put all the data into it. The data from the end phone, the data from the firewall, the data from the email systems, the data from the world data systems, from ERP, CRM, also you have. So this bucket has everything that's happening in the network. And then this bucket is going to use this average intelligence engine, and then this is a predictive intelligence technology is going to tell you where you are now. And if you continue doing this, where you would reach, probably on a, on a yellow, and then you will reach amber, and probably you will be in red, which means you will be Right? So the idea here is very important thing for your takeaway. It is not just what the endpoint has said. The customer has a firewall, it can get a right. The customer has an email system, it can get a right. The servers, it can get a right. You can also analyze, for example, an ERP system. The load of the ERP system. It's a normal problem in most organizations. They have the ERP system and they complain it is too slow. You can use this to figure out where is that slowness? Is it on the database? Is it on the web server? Is it on the middleware? Where is it happening? So you can use it for your IT operations as well. So that's what Splunk gives you. Anybody here doing Splunk? Very good. So it's the right opportunity for you to jump into that. SIM is a very, very, very hot market. Most of the customers, probably at least large of them, they already have SIM or planning for it. But the customers who are like 250 users, they never think about the SIM. It's too complex for them. So they always do not try to understand why they need it. It's expensive for them. But here, we have made it viable, economically viable. So the guys, they can buy it and have all the features more than large enterprise probably have access to. So it's a great opportunity for you. In the professional services sector, you can build a lot of professional services capability to make a good amount of money in that. And then, Any bank, you deal with banks, yeah? Of course, right? I don't know of any bank that does not have SIM. So it's a good thing. And most of the time, SIM goes as a software. It's a pure software. You would need to sell them a hardware. So the cost of the software, cost of the hardware, the support is at least uh, 300 to a million dollars each. It can be given at a much, much cheaper price. So you can take this pure customer. So, how do we project? The simple thing, this is what you've been talking about. <laughs> Simplicity is the answer. It is about knowing when the models, how bad a network is, what bad can happen, how can we control it. It's all about the visibility and ability to take action immediately. <laughs> so, we will run you through a very quick demo and show you the whatever we discussed. Yeah, people will be recognizing, sending an email, we're clicking on it, and then we are making Thank you, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, let me make it ready, guys. Just a quick one single minute. So the scenario is, sorry guys, my name is Tushar, and I am the product sales manager for Splunk Ads and Evolution. So the scenario what we've developed for this particular demo today is that, uh, you know, I just overheard from some folks at uh, Red Engine that uh, there is an opening uh, for VC uh, for marketing. I think he has been yeah. trying for the job quite a while. Yeah, and I believe he has all the right skill sets to be the best. So, 
I have just sent this his CV across to Upas Mitra, saying that you know I heard about this position. Here's the CV of my friend uh, Aditya. I applied to this company so many times, but now since they did not hire me on the three occasions, I'm sending my CV again. Yes, the CV again. So let's see what it has. Been. <coughs> All right. So uh, as he mentioned that he sent me an email, we spoke over the phone, he said, uh, do you have an opening in your company for VP marketing? Uh, I said, okay, let me check. But he said, okay, no, I'm going to send you a resume from a friend. Uh, just, just go with it. So I'm just going to click on the email, click here. This is what happens in, in uh, you know, the video that we showed. is protected document this document is protected by Microsoft Office so the moment I click on enable content this is what's happening so since we have installed mother bytes it's gonna stop me or it's gonna stop the attack by you know bringing this warning message and the exploit part uh, similarly the is the moment yeah do you know what happens when you enable content on Excel or on Word Absolutely. So it is allowing the system, although the system is running in a protective mode, it doesn't allow any code to run within that application. But the moment you enable the content, it allows it to run the code within the application, which is embedded in the way. So you should be very, very wary of documents that you receive and which tells you enable content. Unless you do not, not with that, you should not allow that to happen. So that's an important thing here, because this opening that file did not do any harm. The moment you clicked on enable content, you tried to execute it. So it's very important for you to understand. Uh, similarly, at the same time, the moment I click on that enable content, I got this message on my Splunk dashboard. This is a, a specially built dashboard from Splunk. Uh, it's called Ransomware Insights. Uh, this is what's bringing the, uh, bringing, I would say, the, the live part of uh, the, if the attack happens. So if the attack happens, you will know, admin will know on the dashboard at the same time, the moment anybody clicks on that. It will give you the additional information as well. You can see down uh, all the information if you want to see the event, proper event, how it looks. I will also showcase that. But how it is different, you must be thinking that, you know, how Splunk is able to show me that. So basically, we are getting data from the mother bytes. And Splunk is, uh, you know, getting the logs and presenting it as a dashboard. From that 
dashboard, we are also going to see the anomaly what is going to happen maybe in the future. So what that anomaly is, uh, since you guys are from security background, you must be knowing the, the executable from secure, the particular uh, ransomware is actually bigger than the normal executable. So similarly, when you actually do an executable from a you know, bigger executable, when you send the image to Splunk, if it's very big, Splunk will showcase, internally Splunk will work. The architecture of Splunk is designed that, like that. So it will showcase the anomaly of the executables and that's how it is going to protect you. So you can basically uh, see the behavior of the executables. What the behavior is, right? Uh, Pradeep, let me know if I'm... No, you're going, yeah, you're right. All right, so I will click here if you want to dig deeper in this. I will search more events and try to you know, see more information about the events that happened in Splunk. Everything I'm doing in Splunk right now. So let me just... Okay, so this event has just happened in 747, right? So I can see all the information, DNS, you know, the, of course, the security guy, the security admin guy will be able to see where it comes from, uh, you know, whom it has been attacked, you can see the host details, you can see the source, you can see the port details as well from here. So all these informations, you can see the moment you get attacked, the moment the guy click on the particular, you know, the malicious thing, right? That is the major part of it, uh, you know, when you see the Splunk site, right? So I would like to add, you know, uh, what role is uh, Splunk playing as security, right? Now, if you see it, look at this machine data, right? What do you notice? What is the one, well, one thing that you notice when you look at this particular machine data? Machine memory. Sorry? Machine memory. No. Machine memory. No. What is the nature? What do you see? It's highly unstructured. So, raw data. Right? So, raw data, right? And it's highly unstructured, right? So, one of the things Splunk helps you do is, you know, it starts, it extracts you know, meaningful feeds out of this uh, unstructured data. Now, the, if, you, if you're looking at a particular host or you're looking for a particular IP and you start drilling down, it'll actually help you understand that this particular instance of an attack from a particular IP is reflecting where else in my network, which other systems are being compromised from this particular IP, right? So it makes it simple for you to drill down into your, you know, humongous pile of rocks that you have and extract that meaningful or you're looking, if you're looking for a meal in a haystack, right? And this gives you, you know, uh, an analytics capability, right? You don't just have to look at the dashboard and, you know, take it granted that, okay, this is what it is saying and this is what I need to believe. I can actually go and drill down and understand from where it is happening, what is, what is happening in my system, can I prevent it? So I'm learning from an attack to prevent future attacks, right? So that is one analytical capability that Splunk is going to give you. Yeah, great. So not only this, guys, when we talk about Splunk, when we talk about Pivot 3, you know, why we're bringing these niche technologies uh, on, the, on, the, on the table, uh, you know, we are talking about other events which Splunk is going to, you know, showcase as a big data platform. So not only ransomware, whatever data that you want to analyze using Splunk, you can do that. This platform does not protect you from, you know, bringing any of the data other than ransomware. You're protected, of course, from ransomware. But you can utilize these platform, you know, for the other data analyzation, or other data analyzing, right? You can bring the data from, you know, PIM solutions, right? Rights management solution, patch upgrade details. Splunk will basically showcase the raw data into the dashboards where it will be very easy to manage for the admin guys. It will basically take the decisions of that. Maybe Pradeep wants to add something on this, on the Splunk side patch management or the rights management. Yeah, as we talked about earlier, the idea about Splunk is the census. It's about the visibility. So it's going to give you more information. So we, we have a very limited voice environment. For example, once you have integrated threat intelligence sources, it can tell you there's no monitor attack coming in. But if it's trying to attack a Linux server, do you need to panic? Do you need to panic? No. Reason being, it's trying to exploit the vulnerability that exists only on Windows server. It's trying to attack a Unix server or Linux server, that's not making sense. So you have that level of intelligence to Splunk where it can tell you you can panic or not, which is about the risk. It can also tell you something more. For example, if it's trying to attack Windows machines, now Windows machines could be of two types. One, it has a vulnerability. 
sure, red flag. But if it is attacking a patched Windows machine, which is no longer vulnerable, still it's going to raise an yellow flag, saying we have a Windows environment, we have an attack coming, attacking a Windows environment. So, but the threat level that it raises would be low. It won't be red. It will be yellow, for example. So this is what we call the contextual awareness. It understands it's not just the attack. It's also trying to attack something. Can it be attacked? Yes or no. If it cannot be attacked, then you don't have a problem, right? If somebody's trying to attack you, and if you cannot be attacked, is there something to worry about? Nothing. So the same logic applies here. So we have integrations with vulnerability assessment tools. This in which Splunk is able to know if this attack can actually mature. So this is all about the visibility. It's very important that we bring visibility part into your network. And Splunk has an agent which sits on all the windows, the Linux machines. It's all collecting all the events. So once you have those events selected for a couple of days, this graph would look much, much more beautiful and logical. It can tell you exactly how these machines are behaving. Over a period of time, as it grows, you can see a nice graph of how it is going. It cannot be a sinusoidal wave, yeah? It has to be a straight line. Everything is going good. Unless you just spike or a dip, it tells you there's some problem. So that's what uh, the plan is going to give you. All right, uh, so I think we have uh, now a quiz. Uh, we're we are giving uh, three more uh, vouchers for uh, the way parts and results, but this is uh, following up after the, the, the quiz we have. Uh, we will select three top guys, one, two, three, who will be, uh, will be having these vouchers, three vouchers. Okay, so uh, let me just play this game. Okay guys, so get out your phones yep. because it's all going to be on your phones. You're supposed to go to kahoot.it. Yep. <laughs> oh. Just use your PT. Mm -hmm. My phone is just uh, pausing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just go to kahoot.it. Enter this pin number. First enter your name and uh, then enter your pin number. Okay. Oh yeah, it's number. Pin number. Pin number. Once you start entering, we shall start seeing you over here. Your name uh, will appear. Kahoot.it
is matching with the color which is coming. So you might have blue, red, green, orange. Same you will have the blue, red, green, yellow, orange buttons on your phone. The text will be only written on the screen. Alright, so just make sure you read the text and then accordingly put the same uh, color. Yeah, you have right. 30 seconds to answer uh, each question. It's like fastest finger first. <laughs> yeah, so everybody yeah. has points, right? So if you you're taking time in answering the questions, you lose points. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so, so let's, let's begin. Question number one. Jellyfish intelligent platform which protects you from options are ransomware, phishing, data theft, hacking. Select the color which you feel is the answer. That's an easy question. Very easy. Oh, everyone. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, next question. So we have Vengisari. Who is leading the scoreboard as a who's, who's the guy? So just because everyone. Oh, wow. Good Just one. because if everyone is answering the right question, answer does not mean that they will win. So time is it's not like time. Yes. Right. Ayaz is second and Diga is third. So those three are the competition, huh? Next question, guys. And remember, top three win. Analytics in Jellyfish is powered by which platform? <laughs> yeah. Algorithm. Splunk, ArcSight, CyberArk. I think we gave more time. is between those three. We have three more questions to go guys. Which platform adds efficiency and scalability in Jellyfish? Level three. I think we have, so. we have a network. Who are the other HPC? <laughs> so I think it's a tight competition guys. Right? Right. Very tight competition. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> Who answered it, please? Okay, we will we'll do a data analytics with Splunk and find out who these guys were. We'll find out who they were. <laughs> Alright, next question. Uh, oh, again, I asked. I asked. Very good. I think I asked this thing in the league. Ripin is who? Ripin or Brahan? Yeah. His network is good. Only the. <laughs> yeah. Network is good. Okay. <laughs> next question. We have uh, last two questions, guys. Jellyfish protects you at the list price of. This, okay, for this, sure. this everybody does not know. So it's the best. It's, tricky. It's, it's it's what we would want you to know, or we would want to understand from you what you would think it would come at. So that we can give chance to some other people to win rather than you. <laughs> think guys, this is a, a longer time you have for this. Have taken time, discussed amongst yourselves what you think would be the best price. Yeah. Doesn't mean, and I, I think all partners here, so we, we do. Look